As you know, on the channel, I built an enclosure with Builder and Punished Props for the CR-10, and it didn't go exactly as planned. So thanks to Dave Randolph here at Printed Solid. He's been building enclosures for these machines for eight years. We're going to talk to him, and we're going to get the five best tips. If you want to build your own 3D printer enclosure, I'm Joel. This is 3D Printing Nerd. So the first tip for building your own 3D printer enclosure is you need to let the heat out. Can you speak a little bit about that? Well, everyone tries to build an enclosure absolutely like sealed and perfectly boxed and the whole nine yards. Right. And that's never, that's in a lot of cases, not a good thing to do. If you're going to do anything other than pure ABS, you really, or peak or ultim, you need to think, uh, be aware that your printer's got 3D printed parts in it. <laughs> and those parts have relatively low glass points. So if the temperature inside the enclosure gets near that glass point, uh, it'll start to sag and you'll actually melt your printer. Oh, the that's other problem not is, good. Yeah, and the other problem is, is that when you're printing with lower temperature materials, since you actually cool your heat break with the air around the extruder, if the temperature inside the enclosure is really hot, you're not really cooling that and you're going to get the heat creep and you're going to get uh, clogs and jams. Oh yeah, leaving the enclosure on top of my Ultimaker 2 Plus, and I can't print PLA. I have to take that enclosure off, and that's exactly why. That's exactly what's happening. The second tip is a good one. You need to protect your electronics, Dave. Yes, and we have to make them as, it, we're talking specifically about the motors, the control board, uh, things like that. Um, electronics, they actually deteriorate uh, the more they're exposed to heat. Some people have said, you know, about 50 degrees Celsius will half the life of uh, any electronics board on average is oh. what people usually will say. Okay. So when you can, if you can do it, you want to build your enclosure so that the electronics portion, your control board, is outside of the enclosure. Motors are oh. a little more tolerant, but um, the, the actual um, control boards, you want to keep that outside. For the third tip, we need to talk about the power supply and how in this case it is the most vulnerable. It's the most vulnerable and here's why. Um, power supplies, unlike electronics, don't really like heat at all. Um, you, if you can with your power supply, you want that to be outside the enclosure as much as humanly possible, more so than electronics. If someone came to me and said, do you want the um, power supply inside the enclosure or the electronics? It's always the electronics. The power supply likes to fail. They generate their own heat anyways. That's and true. all you're doing is adding to the problem. Okay, so keep it outside if you can or find a way to, to mitigate that. Yeah, find some way to vent it, something like that. Uh, you might build what I like to call snorkel around your power supply <laughs> uh, so that the, the vents from the power supply actually go outside the enclosure. Tip number four deals with return air and how that can be bad. Right. A lot of people just, you know, they, they, they make a perfectly sealed box and then they put a fan on the back. Well, when you put a fan sucking air out of it or trying to blow air into it, it's, or sorry, let's, let's just say just sucking the air out of okay. it. The problem you run into is that it's got to replace that air it sucked out. Right. And if you're trying to keep a warm build environment, that means you're going to be sucking cold air in. Oh, and that ambient temperature is going to fluctuate. And that's going to fluctuate, and that's what we're trying to avoid with enclosures altogether. That's right. So what you need to do is think of if you're going to exhaust it out, you might want to go through a filtration system and then return that air back oh, to the enclosure. Okay. You're, you're effectively, you want to keep it about the same um, pressure inside. If you can, maybe a little negative pressure, but you really want to keep it about the same pressure inside so that there's no uh, stirring heat problems inside. Oh, okay. And so by putting the air back into it, it may fluctuate a degree or two, but not enough to cause an issue, and you're returning that air at the same temperature, essentially. Correct. For the fifth tip, this is one that's interesting for all those printers that have moving beds. The dimensions of your printer aren't necessarily the dimensions you need for your enclosure. So a lot of people forget that, um, uh, for example, like the Prusa printers, they're, they're not using drag chains. They have kind of a loose cable bundle that's expanded out in the air. Right. You really want to avoid that knocking against the enclosure sides. If it hits 10, 15,000 times per print because it made all those moves, <laughs> that's right. you know, over time you can eventually wear out those wires and that's something to watch out for. So when you build your enclosure as best you can, you want to try to make sure the wires 
aren't hitting the side walls where your excess is moving up and down. You don't want your um, your um, bed to actually be slamming in the back or the wires from your bed slamming oh, in the back. That's right. Or the beds that move to the front as well. You don't want them hitting the front. So in general, you want to don't be conservative with the size of your enclosure. Go big or go or you'll go home type of thing. <laughs> go big or go home. That's great. Thanks for joining us. That was just five really quick tips. If you want to talk to Dave or find out any more information, you can hit him up at printedsolid.com. Big thanks for everybody that watches. Don't forget to subscribe. Hug each other more. I love you guys as always. High five.